Hi everyone, Mike here from Hebden Photography, back once again, this time with an image that was sent to me by a photographer friend of mine, Vince, who was out shooting this lovely young family who's expecting a new addition. And um, one of the things that he was hoping we could figure out here is how to deal with some of the highlights. Uh, the contrast between highlights and lowlights in particular. If I zoom in... We can get a look at uh, this fella's face and see we really have a strong hot area here in this sort of third of the face and then it's much darker here as well the transition is quite strong it's like a very fine line almost as uh, immediate transition so maybe we can work on that and just make it a little more a softer transition and maybe not so hot and and warm in that one spot so if you have uh, a dappled light that's come through, you sort of went and took a picture underneath a tree and um, you were getting a bunch of uh, light dappling on your subject, this might help you fix that in a pinch. What I would do uh, for this is to go over here to my adjustment layers palette and grab a curves layer. Now the control for the curves is this line here and anywhere I tap on it and create a point that point is um, is wh which will get the most the heaviest kind of um, changes. So when I drag this point here in the middle this would be the mid tones that get darkened up and also the shadows and highlights but not as much as the midtones. If I grab it up here, then the highlights will get changed a lot more than the uh, midtones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull specifically on the highlights there, just to darken this up a little bit. Now you can see that's really caused quite an, an effect, but I don't want that effect to happen to the entire to the entire image, just only to the areas that were giving us a problem. What I'll do is I'll hit Control i or Command-I on a Mac and that will invert my layer mask right over here to black which will hide everything that we've done on that layer. There it is. So you can see by this control here the changes are still there and have been made to that layer but they've been blacked out. So now if I were to make sure that that's selected and you can see it's selected by this little selection box around the thumbnail. If I go over here, now this is selected. If I'm here, now the control itself is selected. If I'm here, I'm painting on that mask. If I grab a brush, I grab a brush. I'm going to zoom in a little bit first. Now I'll grab my brush and paint with white onto this mask. And that should help us darken up this area. Just darkening it up a little bit. Just getting this part here. I actually, if I do a little bit of work in the hair here, that should help us. Now it's look it's looking a little bit rough, I know. It looks very kind of yellowy. It's magnified the contrast and everything, but that's okay. What I want to do is take a hue saturation layer. If I put a hue saturation layer on here, I can pull the saturation out by dragging this slider all the way down. You see what's happened. It's gone to black and white. It's pulled all the saturation out of the image. But because it's a layer, it hasn't affected the image itself because that's still here. If I turn off the hue saturation layer, the, the image is still there. What I can do is make this hue saturation layer only affect the adjustments I've made here. And because that curves layer has a mask on it, it'll only affect the area that's masked. If I hold my Alt key, Option on a Mac, and Hover in between these two layers here. You can see how the icon changes from the hand to uh, this kind of um, connection symbol. And then click and now connects these two layers so that this layer, whatever it is, 
only affects this layer here. You can see that's exactly what's happened. Now just the spots that I've painted on this mask are affected by this layer. That's kind of helpful because I can sort of see where I painted and where I didn't a little easier than than I could before. If I have a soft brush, if I right click, I can make sure my hardness is set to zero and then resize my brush so that it's larger then I can actually create a sort of a softer transition here because I'm using the outside sort of feathered area of my brush to go kind of along here this area on this side where the circle is when we're closer to the outside of my brush has a, a less dense um, effect and it's sort of just gradiates the changes that we're going to make. Now, I mean, that does look silly, but now if I go back up here and I click on the hue saturation layer, and if you don't get this, if this, uh, if the control doesn't pop up for you, you can double click on this icon here and it'll come up. Now, if I put that back to where it was, that's what we were working with. If I drag the saturation down just a little, I can match it up. There we go. Look at that. That, to me, is fairly matched up. Now here's the, the black and white change. What that's done for us. And so far we can see from the original photo that was what we were dealing with. And that's what we've got now. If I go down here, we're also dealing with some other faces. I mean, we could apply this same effect to the dog if we wanted to. We could create this change in another set of layers and do it all over for the dog to have a higher level of control for each area that we paint. Or we can just do it like that. There we are. To our dog friend. And here's another lovely little lass with the same issue, just a, the sun just burning her, blowing her out just a touch. Now if you don't like the change that you've made, you just hit this little arrow here, swap your color to black and you paint right back over it, if you like it or not. Suits your taste, your photo is going to be different. So, the exact numbers and the amount of opacity, because you can also set your opacity here so that it makes less of a change each time you okay. So, now, um one other problem I have is that maybe some of the shadows are a little darker than I'd like them to be. Uh, I can do the pretty much the opposite thing going up here and grabbing another curves layer and take the midtones up a tad and down here into the shadows maybe up a little bit and I can do the same thing but in reverse by uh, painting on the shadowed area. So again, I'll hit Control I or Command I on a Mac and invert that layer, that layer mask, sorry. And then I'll go get my brush and paint with white on this mask, this curves layer. And maybe I'll start with a round of 50% half opacity and just paint in the shadowed areas just to open up this sort of the darkness that we were having. And this is going to balance out that contrast quite a bit. Change my opacity to 100% for this part here because I really do want to be able to point out that there's a sign here and we're reading it. Back down to 50% and we'll just open up the shadows on her face. Bing bang, there we go. Okay, so there we have made quite a few changes to the image. Um, it doesn't look like it's too drastic. Um, we'll go to, uh, if I hold down Alt and click just on the little eye, 
for this icon, it'll make all the layers we've added invisible, and we'll be able to see the changes um, side by side, or flick between the, the changes. Here's what we started with, and how we fixed it. Okay, I want to fix a little bit. I can see, let's see, I've put a dot up in here, which is no good. I'll paint that with black, and that'll disappear. There we go. Weird. Now the nice thing about using layers is I can go back now and make adjustments. Now that I see the the image sort of changed with some of the other changes in place, like the shadows opened up here, I can see that mm, I can make more changes and they'll be worth. Well, I can play around and look and see if I want more changes or not. There we are. That. Uh, Evens that up a tad. I can go back into the hue saturation and make adjustments there, just to just even it out. This is for personal taste. It's not anything we have to be exact about. But there we are. There's our there's our original image. A little bit blown out on the sides of these faces and kind of a darker area in here, and a little more even now. Your image is going to be different, like I've said. There's going to be different problems and challenges. you got to tweak and, and adjust these layers as you see fit. But once you have a feeling that you're happy with, with your image, then uh, you flatten your image. And then save it, and you're good to go. I hope that helped. Have a great day.